If you're into the handheld scene at all, I'm sure by now that you've probably seen that we recently got some leaks of the upcoming ROG Ally 2 and the supposed Xbox handheld. The leaks definitely look legit. It's coming to us from the FCC, and we've received a ton of great information about these two handhelds, like the APUs, battery size, and things like that. Pricing is off the table right now. We're not exactly sure what's going on with that. And uh, again, we've got two different versions. There's a white version and a black version. From what we know right now, black version looks like it's going to be higher end with a better APU and a larger battery. White version is going to come in with a lower end APU and a smaller battery. So that's going to kind of get a lot of people in the door when it comes to handheld gaming. But the one that I'm most excited about is the ROG Ally 2 RC73X1. In this video, we've got a lot to cover and a lot to test, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. This version of the new ROG Ally 2 is going to be powered by the AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme. 32 gigs of LP DDR5X at 8,533 MHz, and from what we're seeing, 99 watt hour battery, so right under that TSA limit. And the main reason I'm excited about this is for that Ryzen Z2 Extreme APU. They say that it'll do up to 36 watts in this unit, and that's probably like a dock mode feature. We do know that that Z2 Extreme is going to perform pretty well because we've already got a chip on the market that's really close. And in this video, I kind of wanted to gauge the performance that we're going to see out of the upcoming ROG Ally 2 using the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. These two chips are very close, uh, but they have cut a few features out for the Z2 Extreme, which is totally fine. The Z2 Extreme, 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 5 gigahertz with that 16 compute unit RDNA 3.5i GPU. Taking a look at the HX370, we've got 12 cores, 24 threads, up to 5.1 gigahertz, and we've got the same iGPU. We're not exactly sure what kind of clocks we're gonna see over on the Z2 Extreme from that iGPU, but I suspect it's gonna be up to around 2900 megahertz, just like the HX370. The HX370 is also packing an NPU, but for this, we don't even need to worry about it. And to get this testing done, I'm actually going to be using a mini PC with that HX370. And with this, there are a few key differences. We can only take the RAM up to 8000 megahertz on this, and I'm sure that the Z2 Extreme does have a better memory controller. So with that faster RAM, we could see better performance over there. But I've gone in and I've actually disabled four of the cores. Well, I've parked them, so we're not going to be using them here. We're going to be testing at a lower TDP, kind of a handheld TDP, just to see what we can expect out of that Ryzen Z2 Extreme powered ROG Ally X2. By the end of the video, we're also going to be facing this off against the Steam Deck at 15 watts and the ROG Ally X and a few benchmarks just to see the difference. And with the way I've got the HX370 set up right now, I think we're going to get really close to the performance we're going to see out of the Z2 Extreme. So jumping right in here with Cyberpunk 2077. 17 watt TDP, Steam Deck preset, we're at 720p right now. And we're at 17 watts because most of these newer devices with these higher end chips have our balanced mode right there at around 17. MSI Claw 8 AI and the ROG Ally X. Later on in the video, we will test this at 15 watts against the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally X. But keep in mind, I'm running Windows right now on those other devices. We're actually going to be running SteamOS 3.8. Just can't get it to run on this chip just yet, but we'll kind of get an idea of what it'll do. But at 17 watts, it's not bad. We're really close to an average of 60 FPS right now. And um, we can get a lot more out of this because of course the Ally 2 is coming in with around a 99 watt hour battery. At least that's what we're seeing right now. And uh, we can take this chip way up. So even at like 25 watts, we'd still get some good battery life. 
but just kind of where we're sitting at that balanced mode, 720p, this would be really playable, as you can see. Now, I'm going to take the TDP up just a bit, and we're also going to take the resolution up just to see what it'll do. Now we're at a 25 watt TDP, 900p Steam Deck preset. And with that up resolution, we're seeing around the same kind of frame rate here from uh, that 18 watt to 25. If I went back down to 720, we could get over 60 with it, but there's still a lot more that we can actually get out of this by using frame generation. And I know some people out there just don't wanna use frame generation on their devices, but with a lower end iGPU, I do think it makes a lot of sense Plus, that way we can actually take the TDP down, get a higher frame rate, even up the graphics a bit, and uh, still get good battery life. With a VRR display, something like this, I mean, I wouldn't mind playing it just like it is. Actually, pretty smooth. We could lock this down at 50 FPS and have a really good time with it. But let's enable frame generation, and I think I'm going to take it down to a 20 watt TDP. And here it is. So instead of 900p, we're actually up to 1080, Steam Deck preset, frame generation on. And uh, you can see we're way up there at a 20 watt TDP. We could take this down to 18 and see an average of around 74, but at 20 watts, we're up in the mid 80s with it. Sometimes it gets close to 100, and even with explosions on screen, doesn't dip under that 60 mark. We're still gonna get great battery life with something that has like a 99 watt hour battery. Even an 80 watt hour battery would net us some pretty decent run time at 20 watts. But this way we can take the resolution up and we get a really nice frame rate. And on a smaller seven inch display, which we're expecting out of the ROG Ally 2 with all the leaks so far, we're not gonna see as much ghosting in the small details because we'll be working with a much smaller display. Next one I wanted to test here was Borderlands 3, and I've locked this down at 60. It is up in the high 70s, but there's a lot of hitching going on with recent AMD and NVIDIA drivers. And even locking it at 60, you can see we've still got a few of those hiccups going on. But at 20 watts, it's not bad. I mean, this is going to be a playable experience. And right now we're at 900p low settings right there at that 20 watt TDP. Next one we have here is Spider-Man 2, 900p low settings with FSR set to balanced. With frame gen, we can get up into the 90s with it. Same settings here, we just need to enable it. And even at 720p, we're gonna be hard pressed to run this at 60 on any iGPU without frame gen. We could even take uh, FSR to performance, 720p, lowest settings, and we'll be right there at the edge running it steady. So yeah, it's just a harder game to run right now on an iGPU. Now I wanted to move over to some benchmark comparisons between the Steam Deck OLED, the ROG Ally X, and this modified HX370. Main difference here is going to be the operating system. On the Ally X and the Steam Deck OLED, I'm actually running SteamOS 3.8 because it's real stable, but unfortunately on this HX370, we cannot get official SteamOS 3.8 installed. I could use Bazite and get real close, but I figured we'd stick here with Windows because that's what the ROG Ally 2 will be coming with with that Z2 Extreme. And with this test, we're at a 15 watt TDP, 720p low settings. Steam Deck OLED managed 58 FPS, ROG Ally X up to 64, and this modified HX 370, 71 FPS at a 15 watt TDP. Checking out the built-in benchmark for Cyberpunk 2077, 720p on all three of these devices, Steam Deck preset 15 watt TDP. And the reason we're at 15 watts is because that's all we can do over there on the Steam Deck OLED. Just kind of wanted to gauge what kind of performance gains we're going to see here at that same wattage. And it looks pretty good here even for Cyberpunk 2077. Because by the end of this benchmark here, on the Steam Deck OLED, we averaged 44 FPS, ROG Ally X with the Z1 Extreme, 53, and the modified HX370 we have here, only up to 57 FPS. Throwing a little more wattage at it, just one to two watts will take us over that 60 mark with this benchmark, but I wanted to keep it even at 15 watts. And finally here, Black Myth Wukong. I went back and I actually ran this benchmark three times on this modified HX370. I think the main difference is going to be that we're running on Windows 11 with that. 
because the difference here between the Steam Deck OLED, the ROG Ally X, and this HX370 is crazy. This thing is coming so far ahead when you compare it to those two chips. I really thought that something was up with this, but then again, we are on Windows with that modified HX370. But on the Steam Deck OLED, we can get around 49 FPS. ROG Ally X takes that up to 59. And on this modified HX370, 80 FPS. And again, I went through and ran this three different times just to make sure I didn't have like frame generation on. Frame gen is completely off on all three of these devices. So yeah, it definitely looks like that Z2 Extreme is gonna perform really well when it comes to handheld gaming at those lower TDPs. Even the HX370 with those four cores disabled is definitely ahead of the ROG Ally X with that Z1 Extreme and especially the Steam Deck. We kind of knew that would be the case. And again, remember with the official Z2 Extreme, I think we're probably gonna see a better memory controller because with all of these newer devices that are gonna be powered by it, we've got much faster RAM than we've seen in the handhelds that are already using the HX370 and mini PCs. So we might see a little bump over there. And all of the devices that have been announced so far with the Z2 Extreme are gonna be running Windows out of the box. And as soon as I can get official SteamOS up and running on the HX370, I will do another comparison here between the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally X, just to kind of see the difference we're getting there in Linux with this chip. But I'm really excited about the Z2 Extreme launching and a couple handheld devices right now officially announced is the Lenovo Legion Go 2. And of course we've got the leaks for the ROG Ally 2. Both of them are going to be really great. We don't know prices yet, but this is going to be awesome for handheld gaming for sure. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. As soon as I have more information on these upcoming handhelds, I will be making a ton of videos. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.